We interrupt this program for a special report from ABC 3340 News. Good afternoon, I'm Stephen Quinn. And I'm Brenda Ledun. We're coming on the air right now for a special report. A news conference is scheduled to begin with Hoover Police at any moment. And this news conference, the latest investigation or rather update in the Carly Russell case. And I can now tell you, having spoken to her attorneys, that Carly Russell has turned herself in already at the Hoover City Jail and has since been released on bond on misdemeanor charges related to the abduction on I-459 that did not happen. Hoover police are approaching the podium. Let's listen in. Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to the Frank and Pam Bearfield Training Center. I'm Captain Keith Sescaliba with the Hoover Police Department, and we're here today to provide you with the latest update in the Carly Russell investigation. Uh, joining me at the podium today will be Police Chief Nick Durzis, followed by Alabama Attorney General Steve Marshall. Chief Durzis will make a prepared statement. After Chief Durzis' statement is over with, Attorney General Marshall will also offer a few comments. Uh, once that is completed, both gentlemen uh, will return to the podium and you guys will have an opportunity to ask questions. Uh, with that, I will turn it over to Chief Durzis. Thank you, Captain. Good afternoon. Earlier today, Hoover Police Detectives obtained warrants for the arrest of Carly Russell through the Hoover Municipal Court for her actions related to faking her kidnapping and subsequently making false statements to detectives as they investigated this case. Her decisions that night created panic and alarm for the citizens of our city and even across the nation as the concern grew that a kidnapper was on the loose using a small child as bait. Numerous law enforcement agencies, both local and federal, began working tirelessly not only to bring Carly home to her family, but located kidnapper that we know now never existed. Many private citizens volunteered their time and energy into looking for a potential kidnapping victim that we know now was never in any danger. This story opened wounds for families whose loved ones really were victims of kidnappings, some of which even helped organize searches in hopes they could find Carly alive so that her family would not experience the pain and suffering that they felt when their loved ones never returned home. As we know, actions can have consequences, and that's why we're here today. This afternoon, Carly Russell, with the assistance of her attorney, turned herself into the Hoover City Jail, where she was arrested for the following charges. False reporting to law enforcement authorities, Class A misdemeanor, $1,000 bond. Falsely report an incident, a Class A misdemeanor with a $1,000 bond. Each of these charges carry up to a year in jail, a potential fine of $6,000 upon conviction. Ms. Russell was released from jail after posting bond. We initially presented this case to District Attorney Lanise Washington, who agreed to handle prosecution through district court. After consulting with the Circuit Court of Jefferson County Bessemer Division, the case was referred back to municipal court for charging because the only applicable charges were misdemeanors. Judging from the amount of phone calls and emails that we've received from people all over the country, I know many are shocked and appalled that Ms. Russell is only being charged with two misdemeanors, despite all the panic and disruption her actions caused. Let me assure you, I too share the same frustration, but existing laws only allow the charges that were filed to be filed. I can tell you that I will be contacting our state legislatures on behalf of law enforcement in Montgomery and asking them to look at this law applied to these facts and urge them to add an enhancement to current legislation when somebody falsely reports kidnapping or another violent crime. Because of the attention this case has garnered, we've requested Attorney General Steve Marshall's op office adopt this case, and they've agreed to do so. The Hoover Police Department wants to thank everyone that assisted us from the beginning and continues to assist us in this case as we work its way through the criminal justice system. Joining me at the podium today is State of Alabama Attorney General Steve Marshall. Thank you, Chief. Let me begin by commending Hoover Police Department Chief Durgis for his leadership in this investigation. Obviously, this captured many's attention as a result of not only the allegations themselves, but also the concern about a possible victim in being able to return her home. The work that was done by the Hoover Police Department was monumental in its lift, and the results of that work you are seeing come to fruition today with the charges that have been levied. I also want to commend the many other men and women of both state and federal law enforcement 
for their work collaboratively with the Hoover Police Department in, in assisting in this investigation. Chief, appreciate the opportunity to be able to partner with you in this prosecution. We will dedicate a team to be able to help the city of Hoover in handling these two individual charges uh, and look forward to bringing this case to fruition. One thing I would add is that we don't see this as a victimless crime. There are significant hours spent, resources expended as a result of this investigation. And not only that, but the many men and women who are civilians that wore those yellow vests on a hot afternoon and evening looking for someone they thought was abducted, trying to be of assistance. Uh, we intend to fully prosecute this case and look forward to working with the Hoover Police Department moving forward. We also would tell you that we will continue to monitor this investigation to determine whether or not there are any additional charges that need to be brought, and we'll evaluate those as the facts are presented. Thank you. All right, this time, welcome to the floor to questions. If you'll please raise your hand and identify yourself and your affiliation, I want to call on you. Thank you. Yeah, David Lamb, CBS 42. This question for uh, Mr. Attorney General. What is it about this case um, that made it rise to the level to where it, it was a case that you wanted to take on and be involved in? We handle cases across the state. We have jurisdiction uh, throughout for both misdemeanors and felonies, and when Chief Durgis uh, asked for our assistance, we were more than happy to be able to assist. Is it common for you all to be involved in misdemeanors like a case like this? It's not uncommon. Right here. Uh, Keith Mims, WAGG 610, 100.1 FM, Summit Media. Chief, this question is for you. Yes. Uh, what time was Carly uh, arrested today with her attorney, and has she made bail? She has. She was uh, processed uh, in our facility within the past hour. Uh, do you expect any charges to be forthcoming with her parents, or is this just all on Carly at this point? Well, at this point, and uh, and again, I think anything is, uh, you know, all, all as the Attorney General said, uh, their team will also uh, be searching through our files, and uh, we'll, we'll find out uh, what they what they say. Carol? Carol Robinson with AL.com. Have you, since we spoke last in the press conference, been able to retrace where she was during the 49 hours she was missing, and have you determined if she was with anyone else during that time? We have no, uh, uh, not found anything out on either one of your two questions. Right here. Valerie Bell, ABC 3340 News. Has there been any decision about a possible civil suit against Carly and or her family? Also, what impact would this have on Hoover Police Department filing a suit have on the criminal case as well? Yeah, uh, we have not uh, discussed that. Uh, of course, uh, we, we talked about the, uh, the hours uh, of overtime and, and, and all the significant uh, resources that we used. And uh, we'll, we'll certainly be talking to the Attorney General's office about uh, possibly uh, uh, getting some of those funds returned to us. Please. Lisa Grand, WBTM 13. In an earlier press conference, you outlined some items she had taken from her employer. Any uh, potential theft charges for that? Uh, those uh, would have taken place in another jurisdiction, so we would not have uh, charges ourselves. Okay. Caution Robinson, WBRC. Chief, do you mind repeating those charges and fines one more time for us? Sure. False reporting to law, law enforcement authorities, Class A misdemeanor with a $1,000 bond. Falsely reporting an incident, a Class A misdemeanor with a $1,000 bond. Chief, I know you mentioned this uh, the last time we were together. Just wondering if you have any update on an idea of the cost that the Hoover Police Department uh, expended in those 48, 49 hours Carly Russell was missing. And one final question, do you at this point have any more information if Carly Russell acted alone or anyone helped her? Yeah. Uh, we have not finished, uh, obviously, the 49 hours. We've been certainly busy since uh, since her return, so I still don't have a total on that, and uh, we don't have any idea where Carly Russell was 49 hours. Right here. All right. Keith Mims, WAGG 610. Uh, Chief, let me ask you this. Uh, going forward, uh, there's been a lot of concern in the community as per uh, young black and brown uh, females being reported missing uh, would Hoover and other agencies have the same fervor going forward as they did with the case with Carly Russell? Absolutely. Uh, you know, this, uh, as, as I said initially, uh, our focus was bringing Carly home and she got home. And then our focus has been to uh, find out if there was a kidnapping. We find out there's not. Uh, we, we work every case like all, all other law enforcement does. So I don't have any concern anywhere that that would uh, be an issue. Thank you. 
And can I echo what Chief said? Yes, I've been in law enforcement for 27 years. Yes, sir. I've been in law enforcement throughout this state. I've never seen anybody interested in the color of your skin in investigating a criminal case. And I expect, regardless of your gender, your race, when that report is filed, that Alabama law enforcement is going to do its job. Absolutely. Valerie Bell, ABC 3340. Uh, what was her emotional state when she arrived to the jail today? And is she seeking any help at this point in time? I was not there, so I really can't uh, tell you exactly. I really don't know anything else. All right, last question. Well, Jay Robinson, WBRC Chief. What are next steps after this? What, what is going to happen next? Well, right now, the uh, Attorney General's Office uh, attorneys will uh, start dealing with our detectives and going through case files and uh, uh, preparing uh, prosecution, I present. All right. Thank you guys very much. Will y'all be releasing a mugshot? Yes, we will momentarily. Thank you. Momentarily. Thank you. And you have just heard there from Hoover Police what we had just confirmed, Brenda, moments ago. Two misdemeanor charges in this case against Carly Russell, putting an end now to this. Right. Police Chief Nick Durzis and Alabama Attorney General Steve Marshall saying that they will prosecute this case. And also, Nick Durzis is talking about the fact that he will go to lawmakers to try to toughen up these laws. Yeah, this is certainly going to have a wide-ranging impact given how much attention this got. You heard the chief say he was not happy with the result here that these two Class A misdemeanors, each with a maximum penalty of one year in jail and a $6,000 fine. Clearly, the chief thought there was more that should have happened in this case. You saw the Attorney General, Steve Marshall, standing there with him, a powerful sentiment, and as you mentioned, are going to be handling this prosecution and this case that will be taking place in the Hoover Municipal Court. Once again, false reporting to law enforcement, a $1,000 bond, also false reporting of an investigation. And we see that this case will be prosecuted. Alabama Attorney General Steve Marshall, Police Chief Nick Durzis reporting this afternoon from Hoover. Carly Russell turned herself in to be charged. And we will have a full report at 4 o'clock about everything in this update from the Carly Russell investigation. We want to turn now back to your regularly scheduled programming and General Hospital.